أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على حيا على الفلا
Writing with Shahud Tawz, Tasmiyah and Surah Fatiha, Hazrat Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Nasir Aziz said, In the previous sermon, I spoke about the relationship between good morals and righteousness, and mentioned that in order to attain righteousness, one requires good morals. Furthermore, I mentioned the Promise of Messiah's instructions that man can only become a righteous person when he possesses all good moral qualities. Hence, a believer must make full effort to adopt all good morals and to act upon all the commandments which God Almighty has given and to refrain from all those prohibited matters which He has commanded us to refrain from. Only then will those high moral qualities be adopted which are necessary for a righteous person. However, there are some aspects of morality which if not present in a believer, his level of faith becomes questionable and he must examine whether these are present in him or not. Righteousness is a matter for later. First, one must look after their faith. Among all the aspects of morality necessary for a believer, the most important is to remain truthful and to abstain from lying. God Almighty states in the Holy Quran, Meaning, shun therefore the abomination of idols and shun all words of untruth. Hence, having put worship of idols and lying together, he has clearly demonstrated that if you do not possess the attribute of truthfulness inside you, nor the habit of speaking the truth, then it is a sin paramount to idol worship. It is not possible for a believer to have faith in God's unity, while at the same time be polluted with the filth of idols, irrespective of whether it is manifest or hidden. So, this is a very clear and open warning for one who professes faith that if you are a believer then you must also have a high standard of truthfulness otherwise one should have concern for the state of their faith the promised Messiah has also paid special attention to this topic and clearly stated what is an idol and what must you do to protect your faith what kind of abominations of idols must you avoid and in what ways can you save yourself? The 
اپنے اس مضمون کو مجالس میں بھی بار بار ذکر فرمایا ہے and very openly discussed the importance of truthfulness on top of this he has expressed great passion in this regard which every single Ahmadi must always keep in mind in order for us to excel towards righteousness whilst consolidating our own faith. I shall now present some of his extracts which may seem to be very similar or exactly the same. However, each sentence is in fact a new lesson and reminder. In his book, Nur al-Qur'an, the Prophet Messiah states, The Holy Qur'an has deemed lying equal to idol worship, just as God Almighty states, فَجْتَنِبُ الرِّجْسَ مِنَ الْأَوْثَانِ وَجْتَنِبُ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ In other words, avoid the filth of idol worship and of lying. Both are an abomination and both are vile. Hence, one should stay away from them. Then he discussed how, as a result of lying, man becomes far removed from God Almighty, or one must say, how God Almighty abandons liars. He states, Avoid idol worship and lying. In other words, lying too is an idol. The one who puts his trust in it abandons his trust in God Almighty. So in lying, one also loses God. When a person abandons his trust, God does not go near him. Then, in the philosophy of the teachings of Islam and in lecture Lahore, the Prophet Messiah mentions that one should avoid idol worship and lying. Both of these acts are impure. So in order to remain pure, man must stay away from lying and all types of shirk, i.e. associating partners with God. Then in one sitting, the Prophet Messiah stated, the Holy Quran has deemed lying unclean and dirty, as is stated, Observe how lying has been placed parallel to idol worship, and in reality, lying is a kind of idol worship. Otherwise, why else does one go to the other way once he abandons truthfulness? Just as idols are worshipped without any evidence, similarly, lying is based on nothing but fabrications. There is only a polish on the outside of the speech, but inside there is absolutely nothing. The promise from Sayyid Islam continues by saying, The trust of liars becomes so diminished that even if they speak the truth, they will still think that it will be intertwined with lies. If those who lie wish for their lying to be reduced, then know that it does not happen quickly. When they have a habit of it, then it does not escape you quickly. He then states, For a while one must train hard. Only then can they instill the habit of speaking the truth. Some are so engrossed in inventing fabrications that they must add some falsehood in everything they say. The Prophet Islam states, A great deal of effort is required for this, and for a long period of time one must make great endeavors. Only then will one instill in himself the habit of speaking the truth. Hence there are those who are of the opinion that to make worldly achievements, one must make a few false statements here and there, and if not, then it would not be possible. Whilst negating this approach, the Prophet Messiah writes, Idol worship 
has been put alongside lying, just as an ignorant one forsakes God and instead bows his head before a stone. In the same way, he abandons honesty and truthfulness for his own sake. He makes lying his idol. For this reason, God Almighty has put idol worship alongside lying and drew this comparison. Just as an idol worshipper desires salvation from the idol, he then states, The one who lies creates his own idol and considers it to be the means of their salvation. He further states, How erroneous would it be if it is said, Why would you worship idols? Leave this abomination. And in reply they say, Why should we forsake them? when there is no other way without them. What would be more unfortunate than considering falsehood to be the basis of one's life? On the other hand, I assure you that in the end, the truthful one will be successful and victory will ultimately be his. He then states, Remember, remember that there is nothing more cursed than falsehood. Generally, worldly men say that the truthful will get caught. But why should I accept this when I myself have been in seven court cases and by the grace of Allah, not once have I had to utter a lie? Can anyone say that God Almighty made me suffer defeat in any one of them? God Almighty is himself the protector and helpful of the truth. Can it be that he gives a punishment to a pious person or a truthful person? If this ever happened, then no one in the world would ever have the courage to speak the truth and true belief in God would disappear. The Promise of Sahil Islam stated, the reality is that those people who endure punishments because of speaking the truth, their punishment is in fact not due to speaking the truth. Rather, it is due to their subtle and concealed misdeeds. If one is culpable of a crime, but owing to speaking the truth, he receives punishment. A temporary period of righteousness overtook him and he spoke the truth, but was still punished, then one should not think that he has received the punishment due to telling the truth. The Promise of Sahih Islam states, those mistakes and misdeeds are the reason for the punishment. The punishment is the result of some other lie. There is a chain of these evil deeds and vices recorded with Allah the Almighty. There are many of those wrongdoings and one receives punishment for one or the other. All the record of our deeds is securely kept with Allah the Almighty. People's computers are damaged, they suffer hacks, lose data due to cyber attacks, but nobody can delete the record which is with Allah the Almighty. It is there in its entirety. Man may escape from worldly punishment through excuses, but Allah the Almighty cannot be deceived. He says that this is the reason why one should adopt a permanent habit of doing good deeds. One should attain consistency in good deeds and then endeavor to act upon them forever. This saying of the Promise of Islam that a worldly individual thinks that they cannot forsake lying as they could not survive without it is not only regarding greater interest. Rather, the state of worldly people is such that they lie about everything, even the smallest of matters. Thus, a large study on lying containing many essays was recently published in the latest National Geographic. The research was conducted on why we lie. 
اس بات کو بیان کیا ہے اس میں کہ بظاہر The author suggested that supposedly success is achieved through lying, like the Prophet Sallallahu also said that people think that they achieve success due to lying. The author has written the same and has also tried to prove that in, in the study that it is ingrained in human nature to lie. However, it is not ingrained in the human nature to lie. Rather, It is the environment which makes one a liar. Anyhow, these people also have their worldly goals. In the same article, the author has formulated the idea or has tried to justify lying by saying that it becomes a habit since childhood. Whereas even during childhood, it is the environment which inculcates this habit. Now their state is such that they have very proudly presented accounts of those people who have participated in lying competitions, become champions and are given awards. One of those people who received an award said that some of the stories I tell are true. But my stories would be extremely boring without deceiving and lying. No one would pay attention to them. Therefore, in order to grab the attention of the people, I lie. In that article, it is said about people ranging from children to politicians, from usual professionals to scientists, that their words contain lies. In this society and in this environment, there is so much lying that we observe lying everywhere. In their view, there is no way out of it. They say that we are forced to lie. We say that the standards of truthfulness of Western nations is very good. After reading this article, it seems that every matter of theirs is based on a lie. The initial survey which they conducted revealed that everyone tells three to four lies daily. And all those various lies are invented so that it does not become necessary to guide someone appropriately. If someone needs to be provided with some guidance, he needs to be guided. It is not done appropriately and lying and it is added to it. The person is deceived and lies are told in order to conceal one's shortcomings. Then there are various excuses and reasons why lies are told. Thus, fabrications are invented in order to deceive someone. Then according to all this research, lies are told in order to establish a false image about oneself for the sake of self-impression. These lies are on a smaller scale. Among the bigger lies, the author has mentioned the extramarital relationships of husbands and wives, which they entertain. Lies are told to hide them from each other. When the husband or the wife forge wrong kind of friendships due to permissiveness, they are compelled to lie. This is one of the great evils of a free society that due to such free mixing, illicit relationships are formed. Then once the pack of lies opens, Quarrels begin, and it ultimately leads to separation and divorce among such people. If one analyzes among ourselves domestic quarrels, separations, and divorces that take place because people rely on lies, whereas after understanding this fundamental element of human psyche, one of the verses we have been told to recite during the Nikah sermon is as follows. 
ان سے یہ آیت ان میں یہ آیت بھی شامل ہے یا ایو الذین امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا وقولوا قولا سديدا which means oh you who believe fear Allah and say the right word اور صاف اور سیدھی بات کیا کرو it further states يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اگر تم ایسا کرو گے he will bless your works for you and forgive you your sins and whosoever obeys Allah and his messenger shall surely attain a mighty success when there is such permissiveness when Barda vanishes in the name of freedom and due to this vanishing of Barda doubts rise and a lack of confidence takes hold then people feel compelled to lie and a never ending chain of lies begins Anyhow, Allah the Almighty has spoken about truthfulness with regards to a relationship between a husband and a wife to such a great extent so that there should be no bending of the truth. The verse states that there should be a high standard of truthfulness. In this way, not only will your relationship become pleasant, your children will also be saved from many issues. Allah will also forgive your sins and grant you a great success. This is the beautiful commandment of Islam. However, despite this, people do not abide by uttering the right word. They jeopardize their relationships. They do not uphold this confidence in them due to lying. And who can be more unfortunate than this? The reason why the rate of divorce and khula is rising amongst us as well is that people are abandoning the commandments of Allah. These worldly people who are not equipped with any guidance, even they consider, as the author has written, lying to each other to be a serious sin. It is considered a grievous and a very worrying sin. However, if those who have been guided behave in this way, then it becomes an even more serious and dangerous crime. There emerges an even more alarming picture because they would be disobeying the commandments of Allah. Then those who do this will also be deprived of the forgiveness of sins and also of the divine promises of success. Thus, it is worrying indeed for those people who adopt such attitudes. In this report, it was written that people tend to lie in order to conceal their faults. The majority of the survey in indicated that they do so in order to avoid people. For example, if an individual does not wish to meet someone, they would simply tell their wife or children to inform that individual that they are not at home. Some people tell their children to inform the person that has come to their doorstep or a person on the phone that their mother or father are not at home. In this manner, the children develop a habit of lying. Therefore, it is not an inherent nature. Rather, it is the actions of adults that direct children towards this habit of lying. Then the writer mentions that some people lie habitually without any cause. And in reality, this habit is developed due to one's surroundings and environment. He then wrote that people often lie to conceal the facts, lest one would have to mention the truth. For this reason, they would conceal the truth. Similarly, people lie to cause harm to others, become good in the eyes of others, to make other people laugh. When pe someone narrates a joke, they lie, even though they can easily make humor through pure and moral jokes. Then people lie due to self-impression. Aside from personal gain, people lie, which does not grant them any economic advantage. Similarly, people lie to make an economic advantage. 
Thus, in this survey, there was a breakdown by percent of all the different types of liars. Amongst these included those that lie in order to conceal a mistake, lying in order to make a financial gain, as well as lying to gain other resources. Those that lie in order to evade a situation, such as not meeting with someone. An individual will then continue to lie once they have managed this. The four biggest categories are people that lie in order to conceal a mistake, in order to gain financial benefits, personal benefits beyond money, and in order to escape or evade people. This is what the survey mentions. This is the state of affairs of those people who many from among us believe that their standards of truthfulness are greater than ours. If these people are models for our truthfulness, then this is a matter of grave concern for all those people who call themselves believers. These people who do not believe in God, or they set up equals to Him, However, should we, as the ones who have professed belief and claim to act upon the teachings of our faith, then move away from the truth, then not only will we move away from religion, rather, we will be guilty of associating partners with Allah. Thus, we must analyze the standards of our truthfulness and always be mindful of this. With regards to giving testimonies, God Almighty prohibits giving false testimonies. In regards to the servants of the gracious God, it has been stated, and those who bear not false witness, Therefore, we should not give false statements for any financial gain or gaining any resource, nor should it be to gain any other advantage. Because if we wish to be counted amongst the servants of the gracious God and progress in our faith, then we must avoid these falsehoods. In fact, it is vital in order to safeguard oneself from Satan since Satan has severed ties with the gracious God due to his falsehood. And when one severs ties with God Almighty, then according to the promised Messiah, one forges a relationship with Satan and falls victim to his schemes. Whilst highlighting the standards of our truthfulness and how to avoid falsehood, the Promised Messiah Islam, states at one point, At this point in time, I do not wish to advise you to abstain from shedding blood. For aside from a truly evil individual, who can even think about the unlawful killing of another individual? The Promised Messiah Islam, states, However, I urge you not to remain stubborn upon injustice and spill the blood of truthfulness. Adopt the truth, even if you learn it from a child. Should you witness the truth from an adversary, then you should abandon your futile logic immediately. Even if a child is speaking the truth, one should accept it and shun their stubbornness. The Promised Messiah Islam continues by saying, Truth will then prevail and one should always speak the truth, just as God Almighty states, i.e. shun therefore the abomination of idols and shun all words of untruth. The Promised Messiah Islam states, Whatever turns one away from the direction of truthfulness and leads one away from truthfulness is an idol for you. Always speak the truth regardless of whether that statement will go against one's father, brother or friend. It should be the case that even enmity of another should not swerve you from justice. Moving away from justice will lead you to falsehood.
A Christian once raised an allegation that the Holy Prophet gave permission to lie on three occasions. And in the Holy Quran, there is a clear command that one can conceal their faith using falsehood. Whereas in the Bible, there is no such command. In reply to this, the Promised Messiah Islam stated, It should be made clear that in regards to the emphasis placed by the Quran for upholding the truthfulness and honesty, I do not believe that even a fraction of this has been mentioned in the Bible. The Holy Quran has declared lying akin to idolatry, as it states, i.e. shun therefore the abomination of idols and shun all words of untruth. It then states, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kunu qawwa meena bil qisti shuhada alilla walau ala anfusikum awil walidaini wal aqrabina. Meaning, O ye who believe, be strict in observing justice and be witnesses for Allah, even though it be against yourselves or against your parents and kindred. This is the standard of truthfulness. Although this is the teaching to uphold justice, however, this justice can never be established unless truthfulness is established first. These are the standards that are vital for a believer. Further elaborating on this matter, the Promised Messiah states, God Almighty has stated that justice cannot be established without truthfulness. God Almighty states, وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا اِعْدِلُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُوا لِلتَّقْوَىٰ Meaning, be steadfast in the cause of Allah, bearing witness inequity, and let not a people's enmity incite you to act otherwise than justice. Be always just, that is nearer to righteousness. You are always aware that those nations who cause harm unjustly and by causing others pain through bloodshed and pursuing them, as well as killing innocent women and children, like the disbelievers in Mecca, and on top of that they refuse to stop their hostility. How difficult will it be to show them justice? However, the Holy Quran has not even permitted for the rights of the bitter enemies such as these to be usurped and instead promotes justice and honesty. I say to you truly that it is simple to be civil with the enemy. However, for one to uphold the rights of the enemy and to ensure justice and impartiality is upheld is extremely difficult and only the work of the courageous youth. The Promise of Sayyid Islam states, Many people can show love to their enemies and speak with them amicably. However, they usurp their rights. In order to conceal the truth, they continue to invent fabrications. They do not uphold justice and instead utter falsehood. One brother appears to show love to another brother, however he deceives him, and under the guise of affection suppresses his rights. For example, a landowner cunningly does not include the name of the other rightful person in the land registry. He excludes the other person's name in the official land registry documents. And so the apparent love he was displaying is lost for the sake of this. There are many cases that arise on similar lines. There are many relatives who change the title deeds to remove the names of their relatives from their property or land registry documents or exclude their name altogether or do not testify correctly, thereby causing them to suffer financial loss. The Promised Messiah Islam continues, Allah the Almighty has not just mentioned love in this verse. In fact, he refers to the required standards of love. One who displays justice, honesty and fairness to an arch enemy will be able to show true affection and love. 
عام روزمرہ کے معاشرتی معاملات اسٹینڈرڈ آف ٹروتھفلنیس آف اے بلیور شوڈ بی دیٹ ہز اور ہر آنسٹی شوڈ ناٹ بی ٹیمپرری اور شون اونلی ان ہز اور ہر روٹین سوسائٹل انٹریکشن جھوٹ نہیں بولنا راد اے ٹرو بلیور ڈسپلیز دا ریکوائرڈ لیول آف آنسٹی بائی ریفریننگ فرام لائنگ ٹوڈ ایون این آرچ اینمی When one is able to demonstrate truthfulness towards an adversary, it will increase one's standards of truthfulness towards the others, which will result in mutual love and compassion increasing. Love and affection are alien to dishonesty. It is impossible that one can hold true sympathy and affection towards another person, yet resorts to lying to them. True affection is something which stems instinctively. In short, we need to strive to achieve such standards. Once one has derived these standards of truthfulness, he or she will never seek to deceive or mislead another person. Advising on honesty and truthfulness, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam states, earning unlawfully is not as damaging and harmful as lying. Nobody should misunderstand this to mean that unlawful gains are a good thing. Rather, it is completely wrong and anyone who thinks otherwise is mistaken entirely. What I mean is that if a person is compelled to eat pork, it is an altogether different matter. However, if he declares a fatwa, edict, that pork is permissible, he will move far away from Islam. In compelling circumstances, such as facing life-threatening starvation, a person is allowed to eat pork. However, if he or she were to verbally declare that eating pork is allowed, it would cause harm to him or her to become far removed from Islam. The Promised Messiah continues, Such a person considers permissible what Allah the Almighty has judged forbidden. He then says, This demonstrates that unrestricted speaking is dangerous, and this is why a true believer carefully controls what he or she says. He or she refrains from uttering anything that is unrighteous. Thus, govern your tongues rather than allowing your tongues to govern you, leading you to speaking excessively and beyond measure. One should keep their tongues in check, is what meant by governing them, and not allowing yourself to blurting out whatever comes to mind, because this would only lead to exclaiming anything and everything, whether truthful or false. In turn, this creates disorder and strife. It is essential to always remember that our tongues need to be established on the standard of truthfulness, where it not only avoids shirk, i.e. associating partners with God, but further it should reach that required standards of righteousness. You should keep in view the different states of falsehood that people are embroiled in, as described in the article I cited earlier. And on the basis you need to assess yourselves and your own condition as to whether you are dishonest or deceitful in any way. And if you do resort to even the slightest amount of lying or falsehood, you need to determine how you can get rid of this yourself. May Allah enable every one of us to understand this fact. پھر ایک ہم نیکی جو مومن کا خلق ہونی چاہیے اور اللہ تعالیٰ کا قرب دلاتی ہے دین انادر ٹریٹ دیٹ شوڈ بی پارٹ آف دی ایٹیکیٹس آف اے بلیور اینڈ از سم تھنگ دیٹ روز دا نیئرنیس آف گاڈ المائٹی از ہیومیلٹی اینڈ اے ورژن فرام ایرگنس وی ریگارڈس ٹو دوز ہو آر ایرگن گاڈ المائٹی اسٹیٹس ولا تمشیر فی الارض مراحا ولا تسائر خدکا لنناس ولا تمشي في الأرض مرحا إن الله لا يحب كل مختال فخور And turn not thy cheek away from men in pride nor walk in the earth haughtily Surely Allah loves not any arrogant boaster The Promised Messiah has mentioned this in his writings on several occasions He states On the one hand, there are people who are a million times below the rank and status of prophets, i.e. there is no comparison between them. Yet, having prayed for a mere two days, they begin to display arrogance. The same is the case for fasting and hajj. Instead of using them as a means of purification of the soul, it becomes a source of arrogance and conceit. 
Even these days of Ramadan, the minute some people see a true dream, they exhibit arrogance. We should abstain from such habits and seek repentance from God Almighty. The Promised Messiah states, Behold, arrogance originates from Satan and can cause one to become Satan as well. Until one distances themselves from it, they begin to tread on the path that leads to divine blessings. One should not show arrogance over any trait, whether it is over their knowledge, their wealth, their credibility, their caste, their family status or rank. Mostly people show pride over these matters. Until one cleanses themselves from haughtiness, they will not be deemed as pious in the eyes of God Almighty, and they will not be bestowed that wisdom which burns away the immoral aspects of one's emotions. In order to eliminate one's baser emotions, those emotions which are immoral, one requires the help of wisdom. One cannot be bestowed this wisdom unless they eschew arrogance and adopt humility. The reason why it cannot be bestowed to man is because arrogance is a part of Satan that God does not like. Satan showed arrogance and declared himself to be greater than Adam. It resulted in him being accursed and rejected by God Almighty. While at the same time causing Adam to slip. However, since he was bestowed divine wisdom, he admitted his weaknesses, thereby becoming the recipient of divine grace. He was fully aware of the fact that without the grace of God, there is nothing. That is why he recited the following prayer, Rabbana zulamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanukunanna min al khasirin. The Promised Messiah Islam also advised the members of the Jamaat to recite this prayer. These days we are passing through the last ashra, i.e. set of 10 days of Ramadan. These prayers are vital in order to safeguard ourselves from the fire of hell and to seek the mercy of God Almighty. The Promised Messiah Islam stated, This is the very secret behind the incident when Jesus was addressed by saying, O virtuous teacher, to which Jesus replied, Why do you call me pious? The Promised Messiah Islam states, the ignorant Christians of today say that the real meaning behind the statement is why do you not call me God? Even though Prophet Jesus replied in the most subtle of manners, which was inherent in his nature, he was fully aware that true piety can only be bestowed by God Almighty. He alone is its fountainhead and the source from where it descends. He grants it to whomsoever he wills and similarly seizes it whenever he wills. However, these foolish people have turned a profound and admirable statement into an imperfection and have portrayed Prophet Jesus to be arrogant when in fact he was a man who was full of humility. Regarding how to purify oneself, the Promised Messiah Islam states, in my view, this is the best way for one to acquire purification, although it is possible that there could be a better method, and that is not to display any kind of arrogance or pride. If one wishes to be purified, then one should not show any kind of arrogance or pride, whether it is over their knowledge, family status or wealth. When Allah the Almighty grants true comprehension of the Divine to someone, subsequently one is then able to witness that light which can save one from darkness, in fact falls from the heavens. Man is forever in need of the heavenly light. The eye cannot see unless there is light from the sun which falls from the sky. Similarly, the intrinsic light removes all forms of darkness and instead develops the spiritual glow of taqwa, i.e. righteousness and priority. I tell you truly that one's righteousness, faith, worship and purification comes from the heavens and this is dependent upon the grace of Allah the Almighty. If he desires, he may cause it to remain and equally he may remove it if he desires. The Promised Messiah Islam further states, 
Acquiring true comprehension of the divine is in fact to quash one's own ego and give no importance to oneself and to fall at the threshold of Allah the Almighty with utmost humility and meekness and seek His grace and the spiritual enlightenment which burns away one's inner passions and illumines one internally and develops the strength and passion to perform virtuous deeds. Thereafter, if one is granted anything from His grace and becomes spiritually uplifted and content and one must never become arrogant and haughty. If one forms a relationship with Allah the Almighty and begins to witness the acceptance of their prayers and develops a contentment within their hearts, this should not make one become arrogant and proud. In fact, it should further increase them in humility and meekness. One should further increase in humility owing to this relationship with Allah the Almighty and His grace because the more one increases in humility, the more experiences one will be granted and also spiritual light from Allah the Almighty which will in turn illuminate them and grant them strength. If a person holds this belief, then one can accept that by the grace of Allah the Almighty their moral state will be improved. To consider yourself of high status in this world is also a display of arrogance and such people ultimately reach a state where he curses others and considers them lowly. In order to become free of arrogance, it is essential to attribute every quality to Allah the Almighty. Every good quality should be attributed to Allah the Almighty. Further expounding on this, the Promised Messiah Islam states, The truth of the matter is that the impurity which is born out of the passions of the inner self and manifests in the form of immoral practices, arrogance, conceit, etc., cannot be exterminated unless there is the grace of God Almighty. And these immoral blemishes cannot be reduced to ashes until they are not burnt by the fire of the true insight. When one begins to develop this vigor of true insight, then he gradually becomes free from the deficiencies he suffers in his morals, and despite being of high repute, he considers himself as low and does not attach any significance to himself. He does not attribute his spiritual glow and light which he partakes from the light of the true comprehension to his own abilities or qualities and nor attributes it to himself. In fact, he believes that it is purely due to the grace of Allah the Almighty and his mercy just as a wall becomes bright when the rays of the sunlight fall upon it. However, the wall itself cannot take pride over this. The rays of light from the sun fall on the wall, and as a result it becomes bright. However, the wall itself cannot take pride over this due to its own inherent qualities. The Promise of Sayyid Islam by the state. Furthermore, the cleaner the wall, the more clearer the light. If the wall is clean and shiny, then the light reflected from it will be even brighter. However, this is not owing to any inherent quality of the wall. Rather, it is a source of pride for the sun. Similarly, the wall can neither ask for this light to be taken away. The Prophet Islam further states, In the same way the soul of the Prophet is completely pure. The grace and blessings of God Almighty and the spiritual light of the true comprehension of the Divine descends upon them and illuminates them. Hence, they do not make any claim from their own accord. But in fact, they attribute every blessing to God Almighty, and that in actuality is the truth. It is for this very reason that the Holy Prophet was once asked whether he would enter paradise due to his deeds, and he replied, Certainly not, but it will only be due to the grace of God. The Prophet Islam further states, The Prophets never attribute any ability or strength to themselves. They receive it from God and only proclaim his name. Thus, if this is the state, of those who are very dear to God Almighty, then what should be the level of humility displayed by an ordinary Ahmadi? And how much should he lower himself out of humbleness while being grateful to Allah the Almighty for his blessings? Arrogance brings about a spiritual death and one becomes distant from God Almighty. Expounding on this, the Promise of Sayyid Islam states, Allah the Almighty is extremely merciful and compassionate and provides for man in every kind of way. He shows mercy to them and it is owing to this mercy that He sends His prophets and messengers so that they can save the people from the world of vice and leading an impure life. However, arrogance is an extremely dangerous ailment and signifies a spiritual death in whomsoever it develops. The Prophet Messiah further states, I firmly know that this ailment is far worse than murder. An arrogant person becomes the brother of Satan because it was arrogance that spelt the ruin for Satan. 
Therefore, one of the conditions for a believer is that he should not have any arrogance. In fact, he should be humble, modest and meek. And this is the hallmark of the prophets of God Almighty. They are full of modesty and humility. And this quality was to be found in the most perfect in the Holy Prophet ﷺ. Once someone who was appointed to serve the Holy Prophet was asked, how does the Holy Prophet treat him? He replied, the truth is that he serves me more than I serve him. Bless O Allah Muhammad and the people of Muhammad and grant him prosperity and blessings. Advising the community regarding this, the Prophet Muhammad states, Arrogance has become widespread in the world. The ulama, i.e. the clerics, have fallen prey to showing off their knowledge and becoming arrogant. If one looks at the condition of the sages, they too completely change and have no concern with reforming their own self. Each and every one of them is filled with arrogance and has no concern of their reformation. The Prophet Muhammad states, their focus is only limited to their physical body. Therefore, their religious practices and efforts have become completely different, such as zikr, etc., through which the fountain of prophethood cannot be fully comprehended. Through zikr and the religious exercises, one cannot acquire the true comprehension of the Holy Prophet The Prophet Sallallahu further states, I have observed that they are not concerned with purifying the heart. They are simply a physical body which has not even a trace of spirituality. Such religious exercises cannot purify the hearts, and nor can they grant the light of true comprehension. Thus, this age is bereft of this. The practice of the Holy Prophet has been completely abandoned and forgotten. However, now Allah the Almighty desires that the reign of the Prophet once again be established, and righteousness and purity emerges once again, and he has desired this through this community. Allah the Almighty wants to re-establish all of these virtues such as to develop righteousness and to strengthen the faith through this community. The Prophet of Islam states, Therefore, it is incumbent upon you to focus on the true reformation. Therefore, if Allah the Almighty desires this from this community, then the member of the communities need to pay heed towards the true reformation. The Prophet of Islam further states, You should focus on the true reformation as taught by the Holy Prophet May Allah enable us to stay away from all immoral acts and instill excellent morals within us by following the sunnah of the Holy Prophet <laughs> May the standards of our truthfulness be those that grant us nearness to God Almighty and enable us to adopt the humility that God Almighty likes. May we become members of the Promised Messiah's community, the likes of which he wished. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, in Ahmadu, when a stain, when a stocker, when no men obey, when a talker, when I was of Allah, him in Shurian for Sena. Women say, Yeah, they are all Ibad Allah, Rahimakum Allah. In Allah, Yamuru, beloved Liver, son. Waita, Idil Kurba. Wayan Han, Il Fashai. Well, Munkari will. يعزكم وعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله اكبر